You may remember that a month or two ago I featured a video from, exposing men's rights activism, as well as looking at their Facebook page. Well, I've come across an interview with one of their moderators on Cake. Um, the interview isn't about Cake, it's on the Cake website, which also appears not to be about Cake. If the Cake website was an actual cake though, there is no doubt that it would be a poison cool aid flavored cake. Anyway, on with the interview. The article is called, It's Not, Female Privilege, But, Patriarchal Backfiring on Men, Exposing Men's Rights Activism. Oh boy, here we go. If you're a person whose reasoning has led you to recognize that structures of oppression surrounding us are hidden in plain sight, then you may often have the unpleasant experience of being exposed to the toxic radiation gently wafting off of online and real-life meninist trolls who have completely missed the point of, well, everything. First paragraph mentions meninist trolls, in an article supposedly about MRAs. Instant fail. Next. You know, those insufferable faceless, logical debaters, believers of, man crimination, and other breeds of meninists who insist that systemic violence against women is not real because women get free drinks sometimes. And yet another mention of meninism, when we are meant to be talking about men's rights. And this is only the second paragraph. This is going to be a long one folks. But we shouldn't be surprised. Next. Ever heard of Paul Elam? Today, he's at the forefront of the men's rights movement that has its beginnings in the Bund für Monarch. League for Men's Rights. Sigurd von Hoberth and Leopold Kornbluh founded the League in Vienna in 1926, with the explicit aim of counteracting the excesses of post-World War I women's emancipation movements, junkie. Well, I can honestly say that I've never heard of the Bund für Monarch before, and I'm guessing most of you are in the same boat. So let's go check out the junkie article and see what it has to say. Elliot Roger and the dark heart of men's rights activism. Oh boy, it's going to be one of those episodes isn't it? Okay, let's get this over with. The article reads, Events such as these are, if not exactly commonplace, then at least depressingly familiar in the United States, in the past few years they've seen similar events in Sandy Hook, Aurora Virginia Tech. As ever, this latest killing spree will stir up a debate in the U.S. about both gun control and mental illness. But what separates this year's Isla Vista killings from other massacres is that Elliot Roger not only appears to have had serious mental problems, but also subscribed to a virulent form of misogyny currently known in general as men's rights activism. Roger's internet activities and the message boards he frequented demonstrate that this activism played a key role in Roger's rampage even though the majority of his victims were men. Oh look, the author has a citation. Could this finally be the proof, that I've been asking for, for over a year now? Could this link lead to actual concrete evidence that Elliot Roger was in fact an MRA? Let's click it and find out, shall we? The link leads to an article by the Daily Kos, called Elliot Roger, Gunman in California Mass Shooting, was influenced by the men's rights movement. Well, that's a pretty serious claim. I wonder if they have any evidence to back it up? Let's read on and find out. After a long quote from Roger, the article reads, The true alpha male. What those who call themselves the men's rights movement aspire to be. Oh really? I think someone might be thinking of the pickup artists. But let's continue. The men's rights movement as they call themselves is a nebulous group of pickup artists and misogynists who found each other online, and are attempting to create a movement based around their hatred, disdain, and fear of women. And look at that. There's the claim that pickup artists and men's rights activists are the same, when clearly we are not. And in case anyone is wondering where Elliot Rogers' false association with the men's rights movement started, it was near. This poorly written article with no actual evidence to support it is ground zero. But let's continue and debunk this shit once and for all. We know for a fact that Roger was influenced by this movement, as he has subscribed to multiple, pickup artist, or, men's rights, channels on YouTube. For those here that don't use YouTube, when a user subscribes to a channel, 
they receive notifications when that channel posts a new video. And once again the false claim that PUAs and MRAs are the same thing. Because chasing pussy is a human rights issue, right? Unbelievable. But let's see if any of the channels are MRA channels. And of course we find, zero, MRA subscriptions, not a single one. But let's read a little more from this bullshit article. They include The Player Supreme Show, which rails against the feminization of men and talks about how to pick up women. RSD Free Tour, which is a series of self-help seminars run by RSD Nation, a pickup artist site. There's also a user called McHenry Cruiser who in addition to being a pickup artist is a comedian who has some kind of beef with Louis C.K. and another called Squatting Casanova, who seems to be your average PUA. I'm still digging through some of the folks he subscribed to. So in other words, nothing but pickup artists. Not a single MRE. Next. He is what the men's rights movement calls an incel, which is short for involuntary celibacy. It's a hot topic in various parts of the manosphere. The funny thing is, before feminists started insisting that the word, incel, was a men's rights term, I'd never heard of it, and judging by many of the comments in past videos, neither had other MREs. Once again this is a bullshit claim. Rather than seeking mental help for some obvious issues, he sought out the men's rights movement. He watched their propaganda. He internalized their hatred of women. There's no shortage of anti-woman rhetoric and nonsense. For some of the worst of it, check out the Red Pills Pussy Pass forum, where they take isolated incidents, remove them from any rational context, and blow them way out of proportion. Once again, there is no evidence that Elliot Roger ever visited any men's rights websites, forums, or YouTube channels. None. Zero. The author's claims are pure fiction, or should I say, propaganda. Which is funny considering that's what the author accuses us of. Next. He listened to these guys talk about being hard, and tough, and true alpha men. He did what they told them, and began lifting weights. We know he had an account on bodybuilding forum which was recently deleted by their moderation team. And once again, the term alpha male is generally used by pickup artists. And what exactly is wrong with lifting weights? Is that somehow now considered misogynistic? Next. So this kid who needed some serious mental help sought out the destructive, BS views coming from the men's rights movement. He felt entitled to sex with women. He blamed women for not providing him with sex. He exposed himself to hateful rhetoric about women. None of which has anything to do with the men's rights movement. Now let me stress here once again, this article is ground zero. It's the claims in this poorly written, devoid of facts, article, that inspired the hundreds of other articles, all claiming Roger was an MRE. And all it offers, the only thing it offers, is that he was subscribed to a couple of pickup artist channels on YouTube, that's it. Nothing more. Every claim we have heard since that Elliot Roger was an MRA, or that he was active on MRA websites, or forums, or YouTube channels can be traced back to here. And at no time did any of those so-called journalists take the time to check if those claims were in fact true. Not a single one. Which is very interesting because the author of this article, named, Oligarchy, whose real name is Will McLeod, had an update to his article, which included, I've also been accused of conflating various different parts of the manosphere with each other. To men's rights activists everywhere, when you stand right next to rape apologists, to men who call women animals, and when you allow groups like Reddit's, the Red Pill, to stand with you, when you scream about false rape claims as if all claims of rape are false. It invalidates everything you might be trying to accomplish. No, what invalidates what we are trying to accomplish, is bullshit articles, devoid of facts or evidence, which is then used by ideologues in the media to demonize us. But nice attempt at backpedaling will. Next. I have a laundry list of my own regarding the ways that men and boys are discriminated against in this country. The prime example is the way that our shelter system rips homeless families apart. Because there are so few family shelters, and so many shelters for single mothers, 
men often choose to be homeless so that their families can have a roof over their heads. This is an issue I've worked on, and that I care about. But I've never seen you folks mention it. That's probably because you spend all your time looking at pickup artist sites, and not actual men's rights sites. Next. Probably because it has to do with socialism, poor people, and people who might not be white. Wow. So will, oligarchy, McLeod, clearly knows nothing about our movement. He hasn't fucking bothered to even look at it. He just has a bunch of bigoted narrow-minded stereotypes in his head, based of some PUA bullshit, and in his opinion that's good enough. Why bother with facts, right Will? What an arsehole. Next. Instead, you yell about false claims of rape. Even if this is an issue you care about, it's being drowned out by all the rape jokes you've been posting on your cute little forums. Citation needed. Next. When you stand shoulder to shoulder with the worst that the manosphere has to offer, don't be surprised when you all get painted with the same brush. And who exactly is this, worst of the manosphere, we stand shoulder to shoulder with? We actually self-police extremists, unlike feminism. Next. Despite your protestations to the contrary, I cannot tell the MRAs apart from the PUAs from the Red Pillars and Insuls and all the other disparate groups. And that's your image problem for failing to make yourselves distinct from each other, not a problem with our perception. No, it's actually just laziness on your behalf, combined with your ideological bias. I doubt Will McLeod could name one actual MRA if his life depended on it. And he's clearly just confessed to falsely equating MRAs and PUAs. His update was made Sunday, May 25, 2014 at 8, 8 a.m., well over a year ago. Yet we still constantly hear the false claim that Roger was an MRA. But I've gotten completely sidetracked. Let's head back to the junkie article.